my name is Megan Troick, lead estate planning attorney here with the Law Office of Brian Fagan. And in this series, we're talking about our first responders, our military people. They have such a place in my heart and in my life. My family are filled with people who are in the military and who are policemen. In this video though, I want to talk about what estate planning looks like when you're planning for someone who is a first responder or military versus a regular civilian like me and you. How is that different? First of all, when someone comes to me, I ask them if something should happen to you today. What would happen to your loved ones? However, when you're talking about first responders and military, that's the same question, but the context is different. And it's different because of the nature of their jobs. If you're a police man, if you're a police woman, and you're leaving your house, you know that there is an implicit and explicit danger that comes with your job. For many police officers, my uncles and my aunts, they're both police officers, I don't think they've ever pulled their gun much less shoot their gun in their entire service career. For many of our officers, they will never use their guns in line of work. However, they know that every day that they leave home, it's a possibility that that will happen. They know that every day they go to work, it's a possibility that they may not return home. Yes, for us civilians, that is also true, but I can tell you that as an attorney, the chances, the probability of me not coming home because of something happening on the job is very minute. But I know that for my uncle, for my aunt, for my niece, that is a real possibility. And so when I have a military person or somebody that worked in the jails like my sister does, when I'm doing an estate plan for her, it's a different kind of consideration. I ask her, okay, these are your children, you have these children here, what's your life insurance situation looks like? If you get injured on the job, if you become a quadriplegic, if you need long-term health care, what does that look like for you? For me and you, we may be thinking about pushing off, getting coverage for that long-term care. However, for her, it's a present risk, and that's something that we plan for. Then you're talking about, okay, how old are your children? What's the benefits that would come in? And what's the gap? So we're consciously and actively looking at those things. You have minors, so we're gonna be doing minor trusts. You have your family, you have your spouse. So how do we make sure that that marital trust helps to take care of your family and give your spouse the flexibility to care for your children? God forbid something should happen to you. So yes, for a regular civilian, we're talking about a will, we may be talking about a family trust. But when it comes to our responders, our first responder or military people, there is more emphasis on now and on the planning for now because the probability of something happening to them is just statistically higher. My name is Megan Truick, lead estate planning attorney here where we treat you like family, but most times even better. <laughs> Thank you. Hi there, if you just watched that video and you like it, please remember to click the like button. And most importantly, if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe so that you can get the top of the line, most up-to-date information on our new post. Thank you for watching.